It's Amanda, and welcome to the BDC show. I'm very excited to join you this week. And this show was inspired, the recording is inspired, after a guest teaching session I did inside of um, another community. If you don't know, inside the BDC, we have a resident sales coach, Jillian Murphy. Shout out to Jillian. She comes in and helps our coaches one time a, a month really focus on their sales processes. I, in turn, go and coach inside of her community once a month, typically on the area of performance and mindset. And we've been having this great discussion in our company really over the last year around not changing things a lot, actually not spending a lot of time in creation. If you guys have went back to the end of 2023 episodes and beginning, I shared that our company's motto this year is same but better. So in other words, we're not launching any new offers. We're just going to be launching the same things, the Framework Builder Lab and the Best Damn Coach. They freaking work and they're awesome. So it's not really about changing those things, but only making them better and then working to create more lead, leads into them. And so some would say, ah, but I love all this new offers and this creation and all this stuff. And while I agree, that part is super fun. I love that part of it. The struggle is if we're spending so much time in our business in businesses in creation, then we never have time to spend in optimization. So we never have time to ask ourselves what's working and, and how do we make it better. And so in today's episode, I really want to talk about why your business should be boring. And this is an unsexy topic that people aren't, aren't really saying. There's like all this cool social, social media and about how amazing and uplifting entrepreneurship is. And truthfully, the most profitable companies are the most simple and the, and the most boring. And as lame as it sounds, I'm like, Operation Boring in 2024, here we come. And I wanna talk a little bit about where this has shown up in my life before and, and what I learned from it. I was a basketball player, you guys know this, I talk about it on the show all the time, it was my heart. And I started playing in the sixth grade, had, it was the first time ever touching a ball. And I started going to these shooting clinics and we did this same drill. We learned it on the first day. And essentially what you do is you just put one hand, your non-shooting hand behind your back, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see me do this. Non-shooting hand behind your back. And the other one makes basically an L, a perfect L. You cock your wrist back. It looks like a kind of like a bald head back there on the skin. And all you're doing is practicing a single arm shot, landing on your toes and rinse and repeating. And so before we even got into really awesome shooting drills, we did a hundred of these shots from five different positions around the net, pretty close to the net. So 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, five different spots over and over. And I started that in the sixth grade and I literally did that until I was a senior in high school and still do it when I'm warming up. And so there wasn't anything sexy about this drill. I often dreaded it. I was like, oh my gosh. But what it did for me is it optimized my shooting. It gave me complete confidence in my shooting hand and it became it basically created muscle memory so that anytime I had a ball in my hand and I went to shoot, I couldn't use any, a, a guiding hand. I couldn't really, I couldn't mess up because I was constantly practicing and optimizing this single hand shot. Sometimes we would video, sometimes we'd watch playback of it and there was feedback to improve this shot. And so I share this because I think this is what business is like as well, is that we are optimizing and we're really tempted to go do all the other really cool drills that would have been awesome to do. But at the end of the day, basketball is about making shots. And if we don't have shooters on our team that can put the ball in the bucket, then we're not going to actually perform in the game. And so my coach knew that. And also I realized that this was a discipline that I needed to have over an extended period of time. And so here's a quote that I want to share with you today. And I'm going to read it from my notes so I don't mess it up. But that is success is the discipline of long obedience in the same direction. So I'll say it again. Success is the discipline of long obedience in the same direction. Oh, gut punch, right? It's so true. I ended up becoming the highest field goal shooter on my team, won three-point contests, nailed clutch shots, all of this stuff because of my discipline um, in the same direction over an extended period of time. I kept practicing the same shot over and over from the same places. And that pushed 
my range out into other places as well. And so I think our business is really no different. If you want this to be a business where you actually make profit and not just be a hobby coach, then it's going to require you to do the same thing. And so business is going to be boring a little bit. I've shared, we are conducting the same workshop every Tuesday to cold traffic, running Facebook ads. And then we do one workshop a month to our existing audience like you who want to keep learning with us so we can provide a platform to keep serving value. I show up and do the same workshop every single week because I want to keep getting better at it. And then I can look at the data. How many people showed up? How many people signed up? How many conversions were there? How can I create follow-ups? What's happening? What's working? Are they staying on the whole time? Are they leaving? And so these are the elements of metrics I can look at. But if I'm busy looking and changing and doing all the things and having 55 offers, then that is not going to be successful. And so what I want to share today are three shifts that you can make in your entire internal dialogue to be okay with being more bored in your business. One of my mentors, James Wedmore, always says this. If you're bored, if you are looking for all of your excitement from your business, then go find a hobby. Your business should be boring. <laughs> and so are there elements that should totally pump you up? Yes, we all want to be doing the things in our business that light us up. But beyond that, there should be a lot of repetition so that we can maximize the systems that are created. And so I really want to share uh, three steps or three really shifts to make. Um, that will help you really optimize your business and let it be a little bit more boring. So one internal dialogue shift is this. I hear people say this a lot. I should be further along. It should have already happened. And the reality is when we think that thought it should have happened, I should be further along. It's like, what are we basing that off of? Off who? Off what? Who says just because you're looking at other people and you're thinking they did it, then you should have it too. So this thought is a major sneaky sabotage because what happens is when we believe that story, we actually don't stay disciplined over a long period of time. We end up trying to go recreate the offers, new strategies, do this, new that. And so we spend all of our time in creation and you actually don't get further along because you're constantly starting over. So many people fall in this trap. I did in the beginning as well. And so if that thought is a perpetual thought coming up for you, I really want you to ask, like, for what basis? Who are you basing that off? What, what is the fact around that? Because what we want to be judging it off is, is metrics, not just your thinking. And I'll get to that in just a little bit. Shift number two that I definitely think will serve you is letting go of the fear or the sadness or the negative emotion that comes when you feel a little bit bored in your business. So when the thought comes like, I'm bored, like this isn't fun. Yeah, neither is motherhood sometimes, you guys. I'm just going to give it a great example. Man, there are days where I wake up that I just really struggle to parent. I struggle because I don't want to parent. I struggle because maybe my kids are are not the, their best selves. I'm not their best selves. I want to be doing other things. And it feels really boring. And I show up freaking anyway, because the most important thing for me is to produce great humans. And so I want to show up with them even on my worst days and even on my bests. And sometimes it's really awesome. And sometimes it's quite crappy. But the reality is discipline, again, is long obedience over the, in the same direction over time. So I know if I stay obedient to my desires to be the best mother for them, that the fruit of the labor is going to be some amazing kids. And I'm starting to see that right now. The fruit is going to be that they go out and they become productive members of society. And so sometimes I think that in business, we seek our dopamine hits from business. We're like, oh, we want to put out this cool thing and everybody's going to say it's so great and yay. But what I would encourage you is like to find those dopamine hits from exercise or another hobby and let business be the thing that you strategically review and go over and create numbers around. This takes a lot of energy to build this business. It is not for those that lack grit. And so if you have that grit, then I want you to use that grit to channel it towards the things that really produce ROI, which isn't constantly starting over. It's actually maintaining the same things, doing them better and asking yourself the high level questions, which aren't, which Canva templates should I use? Instead, it's like, what worked from this webinar and how do I do more of it? Step number or shift three that I'd love for you to think about is this. 
I don't need to know numbers. I'm not good at numbers. I don't know how to do numbers. Pump the brakes. <laughs> if you are a business owner, you do not have to do Calc 1. What you do need to really empower yourself around is getting into your numbers. And I don't mean fancy numbers like webinar show ups and sign ups. It could be something as simple. Here's two metrics. I'm going to give you a bonus right now. So write these down. Two metrics that I think every coach should be tracking right now. One, conversations. The conversations they're having with people about their business. So this isn't just a um, a quick glance on uh, a quick, I don't know, IG story about your program. It's having real conversations with real people at the grocery store, at the gym, uh, potential client calls in networking groups. If you're not talking about your business, then nobody knows it exists. They can't feel the confidence. They can't hear the transformation. And I guarantee if you're somebody out there that's like, gosh, I've been doing this. I'm not seeing the results. What would happen if you started tracking your numbers? And you might see that you're like, I, in fact, I'm not having conversations about my business. I'm just posting on social. And in my brain, that should be enough. It is not. So conversations around business, if you started to track them right now, what would happen if you had two this week and your goal was four next week? Right. And then the goal was like, I'm going to keep four going and then I'm going to move to eight. And so these are very easy. And then you could measure sales calls booked, right? Or sales in the DMs, depending on a price point of what you're, you know, trying to offer. It is very simple to track things. Conversions could be, it could also be if you have downloads or page visits or something. Those are another great way if you have a podcast or something to watch the growth there as well. But in order to let business be a bit more boring, but in exchange for effective, we want to start looking at some of the metrics and the data that exists inside of our business. And you don't have to have fancy tools to do that. It can simply be a spreadsheet and you put the day of the week and did you have sale? Did you have um, conversations? No. Did you have a sales call? Yes. And then from there, just go ahead and continue that process. What if you did that for a year? What might happen? Just think about that. Lastly is the so we had those three shifts, right? Which let's just recap them real quick is you should be further along. I'm bored. I'm not good at numbers and how, what to do instead. But what I want to just say about boring businesses in general is they are more simple, which means we need less team. There's less complication. There's less energy. There's less to go wrong. Boring businesses definitely are more profitable because there's just more margins. There's less stuff. There's less platforms. There's less people to pay. So that means more money in our pocket. The other great thing about boring businesses is they're less emotional. Too many times we put our response to our business in uh, is our responses to how we move forward in business are based on emotion. And that does not serve us because we can think a webinar went amazing, but if there's actually no numbers to support it, then it's solely based on feeling. And on the flip side, we could think a webinar went horrible, but then the numbers show us it went great. Like we gotta listen to those numbers. Why did we think it didn't go great? Why did the numbers tell us something different? And so emotions have to take the back seat. I again share this all the time. And we want to rely on factual information inside of our business to help make decisions to move forward. And the other cool thing about boring businesses is that they're more resistant to changes, like external changes, like COVID or market shifts or gas prices or any of that stuff. If they're simple, then that means that they can possibly just withstand a lot of other riffraff that happens out there because you have a steadfast path, a steadfast path to get there. And so I offer this this week just for you to think about what what one of which one of these shifts might really impact you. So think about that, which one of them really hit home for you and how are you going to shift it? It doesn't matter if you're a just starting out as a coach, or you've been doing this and you're making multiple six figures is there's room for all of us to optimize and really fall into that same but better category as you move into the rest of the year. So I'm excited for you to apply. Let me know if you have questions, of course. Conversations in Instagram are always welcomed. I love hearing about how the message really lands with you. 
And if you felt like this message landed or somebody you know that's a coach or mentor could absolutely benefit, then all you have to do is hit copy the link, no matter what platform or share, then copy the link. And then you can just text it to them. You could send it in a Voxer. I really love it. By the way, if you screenshot where you're listening, are you on the treadmill? Are you doing laundry? And then tag us so we can reshare you as well. And you guys, I just want to share something that I'm going to be talking more about on the show. We are starting a brand new segment each month called the Live Coaching Audit, Live, L-I-V-E. So what I'm going to be bringing on is a lucky listener, and this listener and I are, I'm essentially going to audit their business. They are going to tell me what their big struggle is, and I am going to coach them live on how to either increase their client success or grow the profitability of their coaching practice. So I'm going to audit and give very specific feedback that is going to serve you. So this is going to be available to all of you listeners, by the way. So stay tuned because I'm going to be giving more to you on how you can apply for one of those a month. So we're going to be doing uh, one a month moving forward. So that's actually going to give us, I think, around eight or nine for 2024. So there's very limited spots. And we're going to see what you guys think. Um, Our coaching clinic episodes are very favorable, but I thought, I was inspired by Adam Shibley, who came on the show and does live podcast audits. And I was like, ding, ding, ding. Like, I want to live coach my people in their coaching practice to help them grow their profitability and their confidence. And so then you all get to hear it. These amazing people get exact feedback and support. And it's a win for all of us. So stay tuned. I'm going to be inviting you to apply for one of those um, via a form we're going to have available. And I cannot wait to meet some of you amazing listeners live. So until next week, keep, keep coaching them up.